Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the Commander's Vault. My name is Joe. So every week, my wife and I go to our local trading card store, known as Flip Table Games, here in Wisconsin. We usually play with a couple really well-known pods as we play our Commander games. And we have several decks uh, that we like to bring to the game store and play. And the first deck that I want to talk to you guys today is Frodo Soren's Bane. Now, this deck I have played a couple of times and spent a lot of time building and working on. My wife and I are big Lord of the Rings fans, and when Magic put out the Lord of the Rings set, we went on a quest to collect the entire set. And we did. We bought every Commander pre-con, we bought the starter decks, we bought collector boosters, we bought set boosters, and we ended up collecting the entire set minus uh, the two store championships and the one of one ring that Post Malone has. So in doing that, we were able to assemble several extremely powerful cards in the commander format. And when we started, we really weren't quite sure about card interaction and we didn't know all of the magic history. We didn't know all the cards that existed in magic. And with the help of our, our local store, they helped us build and tailor some decks that would be competitive when sitting down in the type of power level that we play at that shop. Now, this deck has changed several times. Uh, when I saw what Frodo did, I said, wow, that looks pretty crazy. And if you don't know, Frodo is a one white pip, uh, legendary halfling citizen, and his uptick abilities allow you to instant kill people in the game. So the first time I built this, I took with no idea about all the other cards in Magic, tried to put as much stuff together as I could, go in and play. The first time I played this at the shop, um, it did very well. I was able to get to the final two people, and I had three life, he had two life. He was able to cast a creature with lifelink as I got in. He ended up blocking, they played a Draenei Magistrate and I was unable to recast Frodo, and he ended up winning the game in that fashion. So I started looking at, okay, I don't have enough interaction, I don't have enough focus around Frodo's ability to close out a game. So I completely retooled the deck, set it up as the sole focus of letting Frodo get through and doing damage to close out the game. Well, last night we went to our local shop and we played a game of Commander and we had a five person pod. I was able to get Frodo ticked all the way up and close out the game by taking out three people to finish. So let me show you the deck. I'll tell you why the different things are in there. And then I'll post a link to uh, the deck list on Moxfield down below. So let's get started. All right, so when I said we bought every product, we bought the bundles, we bought the gift bundle and the regular bundle. So when I first read what Frodo did, I thought, wow, that would be a really cool commander. He doesn't cost anything hardly to cast, and it's really easy to get him ticked up. So, um, if you don't know, Frodo, Sauron's Bane, legendary creature, halfling citizen, for two white, two black, or a white and a black, uh, you can uptick him. If Frodo, uh, Sauron's Bane is a citizen, it becomes a halfling scout with base power and toughness, two, three, and lifelink. So the kind of the tactic with this is turn one, play Frodo, turn two, get him a two, three with lifelink and start swinging. Uh, and then once you've set up the conditions, you pay three black mana. Uh, he becomes a halfling rogue. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. If the ring has tempted you four or more times this game, otherwise the ring tempts you. So the entire build and the entire point of this build is to get the ring to tempt you four times, make Frodo your ring bearer, and make him unblockable to get in, do damage, and insta-kill people. Uh, I was able to do that last night, and all three oh, people in the 20 to 30 life range, so that is extremely powerful when you get that engine on board. All right, so how do we do it? Uh, first up, let's talk about the creatures that we have in this deck. There's only one creature in this deck that is not uh, a Lord of the Rings, and that goes to speak of how powerful that set was. So first up, we have Samwise the Stouthearted. Uh, this is really good when uh, people try to kill you. This gets around um, the commander cost for Frodo, 
So Frodo is going to be a huge target. If someone kills Frodo, you can flash Samwise in, return it to your hand, and then Frodo is still only one to cast instead of sending him back to the command zone. So if you have this in hand, Frodo gets killed, you flash this in, return Frodo to your hand, you have the ability to play him back again. So that is why Sam is in here. Next, Gollum. Um, Gollum is a great... Uh, chump blocker so when people throw stuff in he's only got one toughness but he's got three power so when people start swinging at you you can block with golem he dies uh, the ring tempts you you can bring him back so he's another way to get the ring to tempt you uh, which is a really really important part of this deck you need to get to that four uh, tempting on the ring to really really get the benefit and close out the game Next, we have the card that everybody seems to hate from this set next to the One Ring is Orcish Bowmasters. This is just great utility to keep the board in check as people start drawing cards. Uh, it has flash whenever... This just starts pinging people every time people draw a card, deals damage. You build up orcs. Uh, I wish it did have more utility with... Um, got a thing on the card. I wish it had more utility with the ring tempting you, but this is a great, great way to handle a lot of the token decks, um, or when people just build a bunch of little things that they try to send at you, this keeps that in check. So, Rosie is another really good one, um, because of what she does. So she immediately, when she comes into play, creates a a token which then you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature and we've got a couple of things that create tokens in this deck that will allow this to continue to build so she is really good in any token strategy deck next is Boromir um, Boromir is just really great at handling any of the cascading things or anybody that tries to cast stuff um, without having to pay the mana, he automatically counters it. This this card is phenomenal. And if you need to, you can sacrifice him, get indestructible until the end of the turn, and you get a ring tempting. So this does everything that I want to do to help protect Frodo and get him built up. Next is Mirkwood Bats. Um, this is just fun that as you're creating tokens, everybody loses a life, and when you're sacrificing tokens, everybody loses a life. And you'll see later why that's so important, just like with Rosie. So with Rosie, you're getting 1-1 one, one counters. With Mirkwood Bats, you're getting damage. It's a really good combo. Gandalf just allows you to cast everything with Flash. Almost, almost everything in this deck is legendary. Um, and you're getting the doubling of things, which is just any time you get an additional trigger is just a really good thing to have. So Eowyn, um, the good thing with her, one of the easiest ways to make it so Frodo is unblockable is putting equipment on him. Uh, she allows you to do that for cheaper, and on top of it, each turn you get to do First Strike or Vigilance, and that also is really, really good for some of the creatures in this deck, because what it'll do is if it's equipped, you, can, you get that First Strike, you get Vigilance, uh, and then you can still hold up blockers, so you, you're you able to send a lot more often. Took Reaper, uh, just a really good uh, sack outlet if you need it, a good chump blocker. When it dies, the ring tempts you. It's also very cheap to cast. All right, this golem has a lot of text on him. Uh, again, easy to cast decent blocker, but he also is sneaky for getting in. So I get to look at the top two cards of my library and then opponent that I'm attacking has to guess if it's a land or non-land. If they guess right, Gollum can't attack. If they guess wrong, I get to draw the card and he can't be blocked. So he has a chance to be a free damage and card draw. Alright, Faramir, so 
the good thing about this is that every time the ring tempts me, which is going to be a lot, I'm creating tokens. This gives me that synergy with the Mirkwood Bats and Rosie. And the goal is to not have him be the ring bearer and those one ones. If they die, I get to draw a card. So I get card draw and token generation off of one card. All right, here's a big baddie. This guy is, if he comes on, he just helps finish games. He's a flyer that whenever he attacks, they have to sacrifice a creature, uh, and this just keeps happening. So when he comes on the board, this is usually just uh, finishing up the game. Same here. The Witch King... Um, Whenever someone deals damage to me, everybody has to sacrifice the creature that dealt damage to me and the ring tempts me. And if I discard a card, he gets indestructible. So how this works is if there's attackers, I bring him down as a blocker. I discard a card, I get indestructible. They hit me, then they have to sacrifice that creature that hit me. And I get net zero damage. I just lose a card for it. And the ring tempts you. So you can get ring tempting up as quick as possible uh ring rates another it's expensive to cast but uh whenever they uh enter the battlefield it basically can get rid of a creature and if it is legendary uh they lose three life so any of the three toughness legendaries that are out there there's a lot of them this just insta kills them and the controller loses three life um and if they die, they're really easy to bring back That with the ring tempting you. Then we have all nine Nazgul. Okay? All nine Nazgul. So they all have death touch. Whenever they enter the battlefield, you, the ring tempts you. And whenever you get tempted, you get 1-1 one, one counters on these. The really cool thing about this is you can have nine nine nines if you do this right. And it's ridiculous synergy. The death touch on there, as they continue to get bigger, matters. This stopped a lot of people from attacking me. And then lastly, the only non-Lord of the Rings creature we have in the deck is the Mother of Runes. Um, this is one of the protections for Frodo. Frodo's going to be a target. You need to be able to protect him. That's why she's in there. You tap her, give her protection from any of the removal spells. So if someone tries to bounce him, tap it, protection from blue... Uh, impact tremor or not impact tremors anything that is trying to ping him for damage like if someone else has a bow masters protection from black um, path to exile swords of plowshares protection from white all of those things mother of runes is really really good in this all right so next let's talk about the artifacts that i'm running in this deck and the focus is to make Frodo unblockable and make sure I've got all the mana to do the things I need. So um, the most ubiquitous artifact in magic, the soul ring, followed by arcane signet, Orzov signet, just to make sure we've got the mana that we need. Inherited envelope. This is an inefficient mana rock in any deck except for this one because when it enters the battlefield, you get a ring temptation and you can continue to use it to tap for mana of any color. All right, the next big baddie, the one ring. So this came in the bundle. Um, indestructible, protection from everything, a lot of card draw. This, this is a very, very important card to have in here that can protect you from... Um, a lot of the board wipes uh, and when people start sending a bunch of stuff at you because you are going to be the target with this deck. And card draw. The, you're going to have no problem with mana in this deck. You're going to need cards. Bilbo's Ring. This is another one that is just an absolute house in this deck. I was able to get this out and I lasted four turns with this that people had no answer for Frodo. Um, Bilbo's ring, as long as it's your turn, equipped creature has hex proof and can't be blocked. Whenever equipped creature attacks alone, you draw a card and lose a life. It costs one to equip to a halfling and four to equip to anything else. So this was designed for Frodo. And so last night I really messed up and I 
got this first part and I was so excited that he had hexproof and couldn't be blocked, I forgot the second part that whenever he tacked alone, I was supposed to draw a card and lose a life. I was already drawing a card off of being tempted, so I totally forgot to add the card draw for that. It didn't end up mattering, but in some of these other games, I know it's going to matter, so that's something that I need to highlight. But Bilbo's Ring was absolutely phenomenal in that game. All right, next up, we have the Mithril Coat. Um, if you have any legendary creatures in your deck, this card should be in your deck. Uh, it's flash speed, indestructible. It automatically equips to your legendary, and it makes it indestructible. So how, how this works is you start swinging. If no one declares blocks, you can hold up that mana. If someone declares blocks and they're about to kill you, you cast this, attach it, no damage. Um, and it's indestructible itself. It's very hard to get rid of. This also is absolutely phenomenal in the deck. So this is one of the ones that our local TCG helped me with, was the Whip, the Whisper Silk Cloak. Equipped creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. Um, this just, this changes so many things uh, about the deck. Now, it prevents any counters, prevents anything like that going on him, but you just get through with damage, which is the entire point of Frodo. So this mixed with some of the other things is absolutely amazing. And how can you have a Hobbit and not have Sting? It doesn't make sense. But the really cool thing about this is gets haste, gets 1-1. One, one. So especially if Frodo gets bounced, you can bring him back, equip this. He has haste. You do the things to get him going again. And then he untaps at the beginning of each combat step, which is really, really important. The Dolom Gate, uh, prevent all combat damage, would be dealt to attacking creatures you control. I went back and forth if this was going to be in, uh, but as much combat as I'm doing with Frodo, this has to be there. This essentially stops him from dying every time he attacks. It gives him indestructible, essentially. River Song's Diary. This is a surprise card that a lot of people don't expect. Um, and I don't think a lot of people really understand what it does. It says whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell from their hand, exile it instead of putting it into a graveyard as it resolves. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more cards exiled with River Song's Diary, choose one of them at random. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. So anytime someone casts a searching for lands... Uh, drawing cards, trying to do counters, any of that stuff gets exiled and you get to cast those for free. This is a surprise MVP in here. It is absolutely crazy. It After reading this several times and other people at the table reading this several times, you'll see why it's so important because I have a lot of instants and sorceries in the deck uh, that help protect Frodo and being able to cast those for free from underneath River Song's diary that's a big, big deal. So last night, this card ended up being the MVP. It's the Trailblazer's Boots. This was the buy a box promo from Lord of the Rings. Uh, equipped creature as non-basic landwalk. This made Frodo untouchable by every other player at the table. No one could block him because every single person had non-basic lands, which means they can't block him. This allowed me to close out the game. I was able to go one, two, three, and knock everybody out. I had to survive those rounds, which was not easy, but this made it so that I won the game. This card here, I would say, is probably one of the most important equipments in, if not the most important, one of the most important equipments in this deck. And the last two are just utility boots. Um, Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves, ways to give Hexproof, um, which is huge, and Haste. So this is the free to equip, one to equip. This one does Shroud. Uh, this one has Hexproof. So interchangeable. I was able to get um, these on, which was nice, but either one of these, um, we want one of those to come in. All right, so... Next is the enchantments. 
Now I'm running a couple of enchantments in here and the focus again is all around getting Frodo up. So this one for two mana, Call of the Ring, you get the ring tempts you at every upkeep. And whenever you choose someone, you can pay two life and draw a card. So more card draw plus the ring tempting. This is designed for a Frodo deck. Now this one is really fun. Um, the ring tempts you and then every player has to mill based on Frodo's power. So at worst case, they're going to mill two. So not bad. Then... It's a board wipe for all non-legendaries, and then it's life, life lost for every creature in a player's graveyard. So the really cool thing about this and kind of the setup is uh, you get some counters on Frodo using um, Rosie. He gets bumped up a little bit. You cast this. If it resolves, first one, everyone's got a mill. Could be upwards of four or five, so they mill five. Then... The next one destroys everything that's on the board that's not legendary. So this gets rid of, especially with the elf balls, gets rid of so many things. And then they lose life based on what's in their graveyard. This this card is, this is a surprise sneaky one. This one also, really, really fun. Um, so this is a tutor on an enchantment. You get to search your library for a legendary card and it goes to your hand twice so it's not just put it on the top of your library and hope to draw it this goes to your hand and you get to do it twice in a row so i like i said we've got a lot of legendary creatures in here this can set you up for a lot of really good things and then getting double strike until end of turn is a really big deal because uh frodo with the ring tempting him if he's at three and you hit that tempts them again, and then you're at four, and you hit again, you insta-kill them. This is a really, really fun card. Um, this is just another way to get Frodo protected and built up. Uh, legendary creatures get plus two, plus one, and have ward one, which is a big deal when people are trying to bounce Frodo and get rid of him. Uh, and it just gives everything one, one counters. Uh, Dawn of a New Age, this one was one of the ones we got in our pre-releases, got the little stamp on there. Um, you get a counter for each creature, and then you remove the counters and you get to draw a card, and I gain four life. So, that it's just another utility thing. Alright, and then Smothering Tide. This was the number two MVP last night. Uh, I was never out of mana. I was able to get this out on turn four. And once I did, I was creating so many tokens that I had so much mana, I didn't have a problem casting anything. If this is out with Mirkwood Bats, which it eventually did get to, it started pinging people for damage as they were being created. So every time they drew a card, it was kind of working like Orcish Bowmasters, except it was going directly at them. And then on top of it, um, I had the free utility of it that I could then sack it to do more damage uh, if I had Rosie out, it would have gotten out of control very, very quickly. So, again, this is another really good one. Okay, and then we'll kind of, we'll go through these last ones really fast. Uh, Reprieve, this is just a really, really good instant removal. Um, another way to, to protect Frodo, it just phases him out and phases him back in, and you get a ring tempting. Um... This is just another instant removal. Um, a lot of fun things. Also makes people discard down. Golem's Bite. Another one. Removal. Swords of Plowshare is probably one of the best removals in the format. Bitter Triumph. Destroy target creature. Planeswalker. Murder. Destroy target creature. Um, Surge of Salvation. This is also a really good one to get Hexproof. Um, any damage from black or red would be good sometimes. This is from the new set. Uh, giving Death Touch and Lifelink and creating a token, really good. Taking care of some other people's enchantments or artifacts. Um, an uncounterable removal. Sacrifice that gets around some of the hexproof uh, and indestructible stuff. Uh, and then just giving a poison counter, which we're not really, that's not the important part of it. 
creature destroyer counter when they're trying to take care of Frodo you can counter that um, we uh, card draw and and treasure tokens so two good things um, hexproof and indestructible just another way to protect Frodo uh, this card also from Doctor Who um, this actually was really good so one of the players had a Tiamat that they hard casted got Ur Dragon into their hand played Ur Dragon so when they did cast this uh, which then they had to lose five life which then allowed another player uh, to go in and finish them off this was this was really big this is a really fun removal that I think uh, more people are gonna start playing all right then we've got Sam's desperate rescue so this it's the exact same thing as what the creature does except it's at sorcery speed and you get a ring tempting on it another just good removal All right, this one is just a board wipe for little stuff, especially in, in the uh, token decks and the ring tempts you. And then another way for creature destroying and ring tempting. We are running 24 basic lands in this deck and then a couple utility lands. So if we're doing Lord of the Rings, we have to have Minas Tirith in there. Uh, card draw. Bardur. This is great because um, when things die, you can just start amassing orcs and creating orc tokens to help block and build the board. And as you create tokens, if Markwood Bats is out, that just helps. And if Rosie's out, it just helps. Command Tower. Every commander deck that's multiple colors probably has one. Mirrored Landscape. Just mana fixing. War Room card draw because Frodo only has one white one white in his color identity. Uh, he has white black, so I could just pay two life and draw a card, which is a really good one to have. Um, Tainted Field. Uh, the cool thing about this is I can play it. It comes in untapped, and I can activate it for um, any of the mana I need. Rogue's Passage. Make Frodo unblockable. Escape Tunnel. Again, you can sacrifice it. I can either search for basic land or I can make a creature with power two or less unblockable. Again, make Frodo unblockable. Uh, Vaults of the Archangel. I can either tap it for mana or this is the really important part is down here. Creatures you control gain death touch and lifelink until end of turn. I used this in the first time I played Frodo a lot. Uh, this was a huge deal because now people have to make that choice if they're going to use their blocker and you're going to get life from it. Big, big one. It's all your creatures. And the last one is the Restless Fortress. Uh, this is just a really cool art. While this does enter the battlefield tapped, uh, this gives me an option um, when I'm low on creatures and need to attack. This gives me another creature that can attack, even if it's a 1-4. But the thing about that is that whenever it attacks, the defending player loses 2 life and I gain 2 life. So if this does hit... They're going to take three damage. They're taking two damage regardless. That's just a really, really fun thing. All right, so that is my Frodo Sauron's Bane deck. Now, it is not a CEDH deck, but it is fast. Um, the really cool thing about having the type of deck that that is is you can play your commander turn one and immediately start using the benefits on turn two. Uh, now, the problem with that is you immediately become a target. Uh, funny enough, though, there were enough other threats at the table uh, that it made it so Frodo was able to make it to the end. He never got removed in this last game that I played. Uh, part of that was because he had Hexproof on him, he was unblockable. There were so many things that went into Frodo being successful in that deck. And so the tactic for that deck is completely built around Frodo. If Frodo gets removed, it's very, very hard to finish out the game uh, without him. Now, you can do it through combat. There's nine, Niz n nine Nazgul. You have the ring wraiths. There's other ways that you can start to get in for damage, and but they're all sneaky ways. The most direct way is using Frodo's ability to do it, 
and it is a very dangerous ability to your opponents because it's now going to start to force them to block. So being able to give him Death Touch and Indestructible really changes the narrative of what you're doing. And if you can continue to give him 1-1 one, one counters, you have a utility land like Rogue's Passage, you make him unblockable, or those Trailblazer's Boots, you're going to win the game. So, guys, I hope you like this uh, video. I hope you like the deck tech on Frodo Soren's Bane. Uh, this is one of my favorite decks thematically. I tried to stay as much on theme of Lord of the Rings as possible to make a deck as strong as possible. Uh, I could make this a CEDH deck by adding in all of the staples, but this is just a really fun deck to bring to our uh, local game store to play when people are playing powerful decks because it's really sneaky. No one suspects the hobbits, but they destroyed the wandering.